This episode brought to you by TheGiveawayGeek.com. Win board games, electronics, and gift cards at TheGiveawayGeek.com. The Geek that keeps on giving. Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we are bringing you more of the, actually really the first round of the gameplay for Mansions of Madness, second edition that we're doing. For those of you that maybe didn't catch the setup, we have myself, Biaja, and then uh, Aaron and Quentin from Boards Alive are emailing in their moves, as is John Gilmore of Dead of Winter fame, also emailing in his uh, moves as well for this game. If you want to see the setup, see who we're all playing, go back and check that video out. But let's get right on the board and get started in Matches of Madness Second Edition: Cycles of Eternity. All right, so first off, let's take a look at how the Items ended up, ended up getting spread out amongst the characters. We've got Father Mateo, played by Aaron from Boards Alive, down here with the King James Bible. That's fairly fitting. Kate Winthrop over here has the Flux Stabilizer, which is her starting item anyway, plus Instill Bravery. Then we've got Jenny Barnes, played by me, with the machete. Ashcan Pete, played by Quentin from Boards Alive, has a 2x4, as well as his best friend Duke, and then Carolyn Fern over here has the Kerosene Lantern. So the first thing, uh, Quentin says that Ashcan Pete would like to saunter up the stairs and investigate this painting. So that's a movement right there and then uh, only moving one space. However, then he's going to investigate that painting right there. So let's do that. And as he investigated this painting, he says to himself, this painting reminds me of a song I wrote about being moody and stoic. Stoic? Stoic. <laughs> a, a mysterious painting of a landscape under the night sky overlooks the lavish entryway. Shadowy figures can be seen amidst the landscape. However, n something in the stars catches your interest. Test lore. All right, so good old Ash Cam Pete over here has a lore of three. So get one success. Oh, you know what I don't have out here, but everybody has are these clue tokens. So let's go ahead and put these out so we don't forget about them. Okay, but the clue tokens are going to help Ash Cam. He only got one success. So let's go ahead and do that right there. Make it one success and confirm. Your recollection of the constellation is hazy, but something about the painting rubs you the wrong way. There must be a detail you are missing. Now, that's all. He's used two actions. Technically, Ashcan could move one more space, but I'm going to assume that Quentin would like to stay here to investigate that painting further a little bit later. So we'll move on to Aaron, who says that first he's going to use an action, his special ability to bless Carolyn Fern and make her be focused. All right, so Carolyn Fern is focused now. Blessing Carolyn Fern is one action for Father Mateo so far. And then Father Mateo is going to say to himself, either that's a monster behind this door over here, or someone is suffering serious gastric distress. A ruckus can be heard on the other side of this door, shouting the crash of pots and pans. And is that hissing? Uh, if it's hissing, I hope that's not gastric distress. Let's open that up. All right, so the door swings open to reveal a dining room in chaos. An aging man in a tailcoat scrambles through a serving window into the kitchen as he tries to escape a strange black creature writhing on the dining room table. Discard this explore token and place the dining room tile. The creature turns to face you. Its black serpentine body shifts and changes, playing tricks on your eyes as you try to focus on it. The creature unfurls its leathery wings and unleashes a blood-curdling screech. Spawn a hunting horror as indicated. And you'll note the hunting horrors do have the flying ability, which means they can move through impassable borders. Oh, then suffer two horror. Okay, that said, suffer two horror, willpower negates. Before we do this, let me do that real quick. So Father Mateo has a willpower of five. I'm going to roll all these. All right, he only got one success. He could use a clue token. However, his sanity is eight. So I'm going to go ahead and allow him to suffer one, one horror. So we've got... 
Come on now. Hallucinations. Everywhere you look, you see horrible shadows or ghosts from your past. You cannot bear to look any longer. Keep face up. Roll one fewer die while resolving observation tests. And his observation is already down at two. Sorry about that, Aaron. I apologize. Hope that was the right move for you. So you've got one horror now. However, you... Uh, we're still exploring this. We're still setting the room up. In the center of the dining table, a carving knife sits embedded in a roast. Place the knife common item as indicated. There we go. Now that is a melee weapon. It's a bladed weapon with one base damage. Here we've got a china cabinet that stands against the wall, though it looks to have been repurposed to store all manner of knickknacks. That's going to be right here. You can see a kitchen through the serving window. Most of the cabinets are ajar due to the food preparation, but one has been locked shut with a chain. Uh, one that has been locked shut with a chain catches your attention, which is going to be right here. And over here we've got, uh, in the kitchen, you can also see that someone has left a refrigerator open. Water leaks out into a puddle on the floor. And we've got... A person, you spot the old man you saw climbing through the serving window huddling in the corner behind the oven. Sweat beads off his brow and his eyes bulge in terror. All right, so this is Eugene Clemens, and he is right here huddling, cowering from the hunting horror. That's the butler. And now he may move one space into the explored area. Now, the problem I've got here is Father Mateo doesn't have any weapons. I'm going to assume he's not going to want to go hands-on with the hunting horror. So I will leave him where he is. And he's used two actions now. So now we'll move on to Mr. John Gilmore. All right, so Kate is going to go up the stairs to the right and explore an end table stands against the wall holding a telephone. So. Kate's going to look at his telephone and maybe there will be some clue about who the owner has contacted last is what John's thinking. So she tries the drawer, but the warped wood has left stuck shut. She's going to have to test her strength. Kate's strength is three. Baby girl, you want to roll for him? All right. And we got one success, but... You know what? Let's go ahead. I didn't use a clue token last time. I think that Kate will use a clue token to turn this investigation into a success. So it'll be two successes. With a powerful tug, she opens the drawer, causing the phone to go crashing to the ground. Inside the drawer, she finds an item that looks like it has been sitting there for quite some time. Gain the Holy Cross common item. All right, so Kate has picked up the Holy Cross out of that drawer. It's an equipment. Roll one additional die while resolving will tests. And that's both of her actions. She, again, could move one space. Well, this is gone now. So, actually, there's no reason for her to stay in that space. Um, Kate does have the ability to deal with monsters. I think I will move her down here. And we'll see if that ends up being something that uh, that she ends up dealing with mo this monster at all. Because she does have the flux stabilizer, which can move monsters around, kind of get them out of the way, that sort of thing. All right, so you're going to go first? Yeah. What do you um, think you want to do? I think I might move to that painting. So all right. So I just do this. Yep, move right on up to that painting. All right. And then... I'm going to shoot the painting. <laughs> Dude, don't shoot the painting. I think that would be mm -hmm. counterproductive. So let's click on that right there. And we'll search it, and we know that we've got to use your lore, which is you're going to roll three dice. All right? Roll right up here. Oh, so we got one again. Is there anything we can do? All right, so we'll just do one and see if that helps. Hey, you identify several of the specks of light in the sky as planets. They are all occupying the same section of the sky as if coming into alignment not unlike the planets in the sky tonight. Beneath the painting, a plaque reads, In Memory of Lilith Vanderbilt. Gain two clues, then discard this search token. So we'll get rid of that. 
So you got your two clues? Mm -hmm. All right, you want to put them over there with the rest of yours. Okay, so now that's both of your actions, so now I've got to figure out what I'm going to do. And I've got a weapon, so I think the best thing for me to do is go and actually fight this monster. So I'm going to move one space here. And let's see. I'm going to attack with my machete. The beast hurls its limbs towards you and you slash at them as they pass. Agility. So I've got to do, I've got four agility. All right, here we go. Oh, okay, so I got two. Now, in that case, if I pass, which I did, uh, dodge just enough to get a good angle and cut deep into the creature, the monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage plus one. All right, so that'll be three damage. And that's going to be it. I can't do anything else. Um, okay, so let's move on. That's Everybody's done their actions. Let's move on to the mythos phase. The world lengthens and stretches away, then snaps back to shape. This mythos event affects the investigator with the most spells, which will be Kate. All right. I'm glad that's not me. As you turn your head, you feel the world shifting at uneven speeds. Parallax revealing unknown truths about the nature of the universe. Gain the wither spell, then suffer to horror. All right, so Kate now has the wither spell as well, but has suffered to horror. Lore will negate, so she's going to roll four. You want to roll that for... Uh... So since, let's see, she's got eight, insa eight sanity as well. Negate one. She only has one clue left. Let's save that and let her suffer one horror. Instead, we've got Horrific Arcana. You whimper as your mind rejects the impossible. Resolve immediately. Suffer one additional face down horror for each spell you have. Well, that's unfortunate. All right, so two more Face down hard since he's got two spells. So he's at three. Three hard now. Or five the sanity left. The character's a she. Yes, you're right. I meant she has five sanity or John Gilmore has five sanity. But yeah, you're right. I should say she. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I should say she. I apologize, Mr. Gilmore, for calling you a he. The hunting horror moves three spaces toward the investigator within range who has suffered the most damage. Um, now, no one has suffered damage. Everybody has suffered. So several people have suffered horror, but no one suffered damage. So the monster um, is going to stay right where he is, it is, and attack me. The creature seems to smell your blood and emits an ear piercing shriek before slamming his leathery body into yours. Strength. My strength is three. This is not. Looking good. Oh, well, I will use one clue. All right, so I pass. I punch it in the center mass before it can do any more harm. I suffer one face down damage. Each investigator, each investigator must resolve a hard check, which is only going to be me because this door blocks the line of sight for everyone else. So I'll do a hard check. How can such a monster exist? It flutters on wings too small to support its bulk, sliding sinuously through spaces where it should not fit. Its every movement sends a terrible thrill running down your spine. Suffer three horror. Will minus one negates. I only have three will to begin with, so we're going with two here. So is that the this guy? Yeah, right now, yeah, that's that guy. Ugh. I'm going to use my last clue because I only have six sanity to begin with. So now I'm going to take uh, two horror. The first one, minor shock. Ah, your heart races and your breath catches in your throat. Resolve immediately. No additional effect. Flip this card face down. And another minor shock. All right. So I've got those two. 
And that's all of that. So we'll move on into the investigator phase. And just to keep things moving, Biage and I will take our turn to start off with. That way, everyone else has a little bit more information to work with when they take their turns. So I will start by attacking this guy. Are you okay if I go first and try to kill this guy? Sure, go ahead. I don't want to bother that guy. All right. You slash... I slash wildly, blinded by fear and rage. My arm is moving on the own accord. Agility. I need two successes. I've got four agility. Here we go. And I got it. Uh, my instincts reward me, and I feel my weapon tear through the creature. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage, plus my test result. So that's one, two, three, four. Almost got him. Not quite. So I'm going to attack him one more time for my second action. With the strength of both hands, you drive the sharp edge deep into the beast. Strength. Ah, I only have three strengths, so this is going to be a little more difficult. Didn't get it. Didn't get it. So I failed, which means the blade lodges in the beast's side and the creature shakes you off and thrashes to dislodge the weapon. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage. All right, but then I drop my weapon. So I killed the hunting horror, but and we're going to do that, confirm. Then I also dropped this in that space. The creature lurches to the ground dead. Hearing the monster's final fate, the old man in the kitchen cautiously steps out. He, Eugene, the butler, is going to move down here next to me. All right, so Biagi, have you figured out what you want to do? Yeah, um, I think I'll move all the way over here. And then you're going to explore that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see. The door leads to a small front room of the mansion. The light from the entry shines into the dimly lit office as you open the door. A lamp sits on a large wooden desk casting long shadows across the across a mess of papers and books scattered around the room. The desktop under the lamp is cluttered with papers. Place a search token right here. Across the room, a bookcase stacked with books and other items stands against the wall. Among the items, you spot something useful. Place the bandages. So the bandages, as an action, the investigator that has these can discard up to two face down damage and then discard this card. Oh, and I just realized we can't even see what's going on over here. All right, sorry about that camera work issue there, but here you can see we've got the study, the one search token, and the bandages. It's very revolting. And you may move one space into the explored area. So, Biagi, do you want to... Oh, you know what? I have the wrong wall there as well. This should actually be that. Not sure it matters, but sometimes it, it might. Does. All right, so now do you want to move one space into here or no? Um... I'm going to check it. I, I don't want to run into any monsters, but I really don't care because I want to explore that. All right, so you're moving in there. And now technically you've got one more move because you've moved from here to here, and then you got a free movement into the room. So you've got one more move that you could move here if you wanted to to pick up the bandages on your next turn. So do you want to move there or do you want to stay where you're at? I want to stay where I'm at. Can okay. I do that? Absolutely. Right now? No, you can't do that. You have to wait till your next turn. Okay, so we've got through the first round and then we're done with our moves. So now we will quit there and we'll see what uh, Aaron and Quentin and uh, John Gilmore have to say for their moves based on what's happened so far. Pretty successful, got rid of that hunting horror fairly quickly. Obviously, uh, a little bit more horror has been taken by some of the other members, uh, than, or including myself actually, than maybe would be liked. Uh, but we'll see. Biage is doing pretty good. She doesn't have any horror or damage. Of course, she apparently is actively avoiding monsters, she says as well. Is, is that your general strategy? Yeah. Okay. So, let's end here. Now, I would like anyone who's watching, if you would like to suggest some moves for me, be sure to leave that in the comments section below. Yeah. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this channel, please subscribe. You can find me on Twitter, at Board Offline, and until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.